In this video, we're going to explore transportation problems in business analytics. So we're going to start with um, drawing our network diagram, and then we will define our objective function and constraints. And then just like always, we will solve this in a separate video using Solver and Microsoft Excel. So let's go ahead and dive into our question. So you are in charge of the logistics at a company that has three warehouses and four retail stores. Each warehouse has a different capacity for storage and each store has a different demand that needs to be fulfilled. The cost of transporting goods from each warehouse to each store varies. The goal is to determine the number of goods to ship from each warehouse to each store such that all stores demands are met. The warehouse capacities are not exceeded and the transport costs are minimized. So if we just take a look at this little chart here, we see that we have three warehouses and we see that we have four stores. And what we see is that there are different costs. So if we just want to interpret this for a second, it, to go from warehouse one to store A would cost $4 per unit. And to go from warehouse three to store D would cost $8 a unit. We see in our margins that we have something called supply. So that's the number of units that are available at warehouse one, uh, which is 70. The number of units at warehouse two is 50 and then 80 for warehouse three. Our demand, so store A has a demand of 40 units, and we'll just use another example here. Store C has a demand of 60 units, and then you can fill in the rest for um, the following stores. So let's go ahead and draw what's called our network diagram. So let's first start off by mapping our supply, okay? And what we know is that we have three warehouses, so we have uh, warehouse one, warehouse two, and warehouse three, right? And we can just, you don't really need the little boxes around them, but it helps keep things clean. And what do we know about the warehouses? Well, we know that there's 70 units of supply at warehouse one. There are 50 units at warehouse two and 80 units at warehouse three, right? Just taking a look at our supply right here. And if we were to add all of this up, 70 plus 50 is 120 plus 80, means that we have 200 units of supply. Now, what about our demand? Well, our demand looks like this. We have store A, store B, store C, and store D. And again, we can put little boxes around it to keep things a little tidy. And what do we notice about our demand? Well, store A has a demand of 40 units. Store B is 30 units, store C is 60 units, and store D is 80 units. Now, if we add all this up, 40 plus 30 is 70, plus 60 is 130, plus 80 is 210. So what we notice is that in this case, the supply is less than the demand. In other words, the supply, is, the supply is less than demand. We have greater demand than we do supply. So we know automatically that all of the store demands are not going to be met because we do not have sufficient supply. We'll come back to that in a minute, but we are looking to minimize our transportation costs while trying to meet as much demand as we possibly can because we already know that we're not going to meet that supply or meet that demand. We call this an unbalanced transportation problem, okay? So if you're looking for the technical term, it's called an unbalanced transportation problem. Now back to our network diagram. We can draw what are called arcs and this will show our pathways. So for warehouse one to store A, it's gonna cost us $4. From warehouse one to store B, it's gonna cost us $6.
from warehouse one to store C is gonna cost us $9, and from warehouse one to store D is gonna cost us $5 per unit. All right, we'll change our color here just to keep things a little bit clean. So from warehouse two to store A, well, this is told it's gonna to cost us $5. From warehouse two to store B, it's gonna cost us $4. To C is $7. From warehouse two to store D, six dollars. Right again, all this information is coming here from this table, right here. And then finally, we'll uh, change our color one more time. Let's do this one in in red. So from warehouse three to store A is three dollars. Warehouse three to store B is three dollars. Warehouse three to store C is $4 and warehouse three to store D is $8. Okay, so there is our network diagram for this transportation problem. If we had a little bit more space, you might be able to spread things out so they don't get quite as bunched, but no less you have the basic general idea of how the network diagram works. <clears throat> um, a quick way to calculate how many arcs you need is simply um, to multiply your nodes together. So in this case, um, we can just do three times four, which is equal to 12, which means that we should have 12 arcs in our network diagram, provided that there aren't any constraints that we need to worry about there. And now on the subject of that, of constraints, let's go ahead and define our decision variables. So. We're going to make it easy on ourselves and we're going to say let x i j equal the number of units transported from warehouse whoops from warehouse i to store j and we're going to say where i whoops where i is equal to one which is warehouse one two which is warehouse two and three which is warehouse three and where J is equal to A, which is store A, B, which is store B, C, which is store C, and then D, which is store D. Okay, so now that we've defined our decision variables, we go back to our question and what we remember is that our question is telling us that we're looking to minimize our transportation costs. So we have a minimization objective function. So what we're gonna look here is we're gonna say min z is equal to, and then all we're going to do is plug in our arcs from our network diagram. So um, warehouse one to store A, which is X1A is $4. So 4x1a plus 6x1b plus 9x1c plus 5x1d, right? The transportation cost from warehouse one to store D is $5, right? Just exactly like it is in the table. Now we're gonna keep going plus warehouse two to store A, so X2A is five, plus five X2A plus four X2B plus seven X2C plus six X2D. And finally, from warehouse three 
So warehouse three to store A, X three A is three. So three X three A plus three X three B plus four X three C plus eight X three D. Okay, so there is our objective function. Now, we have to write our constraints. So subject to, well, we have a number of constraints, so we can just go ahead and um, get going on that. So let's write our supply constraints first. So we know that we have less supply than we do demand. So we're gonna have to use all of our supply. So let's write our supply constraint for warehouse one. So uh, supply warehouse one. Well, what we're gonna say then is X1A plus X1B plus X1C plus X1D, right? This is all of the supply that is being sent from warehouse one to each of the stores, right? So this is from warehouse one to store A, warehouse one to store B, warehouse one to store C, warehouse one to store D, okay? Because we are in an unbalanced transportation problem and we have more demand than we do supply, we know that we have to send out all of our units of demand, or sorry, of supply. So we have to send out all 70 units so X1A plus X1B plus X1C plus X1D is going to be equal to 70. We're sending it all out. Now let's write our constraint for supply of warehouse 2. So X2A plus X2B plus X2C plus X2D, right? The uh, supply leaving warehouse 2 in route for store A plus the supply leaving warehouse two for store B plus the supply leaving warehouse two for store C plus the supply leaving warehouse two for store D is equal to the total amount of supply that we have available with warehouse two, which is 50. And then supply warehouse three is simply equal to X3A plus X3B plus x3c plus x3d and again equal to our supply which is 80. okay we now have demand constraints so we notice let's clean some of this up so that it's a little bit easier we notice that each store has a respective demand and that the stores are not to um <clears throat> uh are we're supposed to meet our store demands, but we're not to exceed them. So what we're gonna say then is uh, demand store A. And what we're gonna do then is we're going to look at all of our arcs that lead to store A. Let me just maybe put this in a different, let me just highlight it. Right, so these three arcs that all go to store A, we have to capture that in our constraint. So what is that? Well, that's X1A plus X2A plus X3A. And this is going to be less than or equal to our demand for store A, which is 40. Why is it less than or equal to and not equal to? Well, as I mentioned before, we have an unbalanced transportation problem. We have more demand than we have supply. So one of these stores or more of these stores is not going to meet uh, all of their demand. And what we're looking for is to mac minimize our transportation costs. Okay, so now we're looking at demand for store B. Same thing, but this one is X1B plus X2B plus X3B. And again, what's our demand? 30, so less than or equal to 30. Demand, 
store C. So this is then just x1c plus x2c plus x3c less than or equal to 60. And then demand of store D, you guessed it, x1d plus x2d plus x3d. Again, less than or equal to our demand here, which is 80, right? Let me just, yeah. Less than or equal to 80. And then finally, our last constraint here is that xij must be greater than or equal to zero, right? That's our non-negativity constraint. So now we have done, we've mapped out our network diagram, we've written our objective function, we've identified our decision variables, and we've written our constraints. So now what's left is to solve this in Excel, and we will do that in the next video. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.